When you were born, you came out head first. You went from a confined place into wide open spaces head first. It never changes. You believe your way forward. Jesus said that whosoever believeth in me would not perish but have everlasting life. Whoever believes in me, he shall have the light of life. He will not walk in darkness. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Do you believe this? Martha, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory. You believe your way forward. The world wants to attack your believing. That's why the world wants to govern the airways and pump lies at you 24-7 365 because the devil knows that what you believe determines what you receive. Uh, Ezekiel 37, the title of my message tonight is The Breath of God. The Breath of God. It'll make sense in a moment. It says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, in the midst of a low place. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. Behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones live? The Spirit of the Lord brings Ezekiel into a valley, into a low point, into a low place. And all he sees around about him is death. When he turns on CNN, there's death. When he turns on MSNBC, there's death. When he turns on the radio, it's death. The television, death. When he looks on Google, death. All around him is death. All around him is mass. All around him is COVID. All around him is death. And it's interesting, God says to him, son of man, can these bones live? Son of man, can you see life? The enemy wants, you to see death. He doesn't want you to see life. You and I are cut from a different cloth once we're born again. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That tells me then that if, if, if I'm in Christ and I'm a new creation, that then I have access to new ways of thinking. Right. Romans 12 tells me that I ought to uh, offer my body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God and not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but rather be transformed by the Renew. renewing of my mind that I may prove what is that good, that perfect and that acceptable will of God. My Bible tells me that I have access to the mind of Christ. My, my Bible tells me that, that the Spirit that lives in me, the Spirit that lives in you when you're born again is not the Spirit of this world, but it is the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Can somebody say amen? I, I need you to understand that the enemy, the enemy was there when the schematics, when the blueprints were printed on heaven's computer for God's crowning joy of His creation, His, His final work, His last stanza, the piece de la resistance. His masterpiece was creating you in His image and in His likeness. And the devil saw the schematics and he saw the plans and he saw that God put your eyes in the front of your head. He didn't put our eyes in the back of our heads. Too often we meet people and they'll always tell you about the good old days. Well, back in the 1960s, I've got to tell you something. George, back in 1960, like we had a move of God in here. And out to get, always looking back. Some people are rowboat Christians. <laughs> they're going that way, but they're looking back at where they came. You don't understand my past. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know. God didn't put our eyes in the side of our head like fish. Even though Instagram and social media, we're always looking and comparing ourselves one to another. The Bible says we're not wise if we've got our eyes in this. But God put our eyes in the front of our heads because you're meant to be forward looking. The enemy knows that whatever he puts in front of you, whatever he puts in front of you affects the momentum and the direction of your life. So God brings Ezekiel into a valley and it, he's surrounded by death. He's surrounded by what once was. He's surrounded by hopelessness, surrounded by dry bones. And the word of the Lord comes to him and says, son of man, can these bones live? And I, I wanna say to you to, tonight 
that before you leave this meeting, before I'm done, the breath of God is going to breathe over your life. And he's going to cancel the assignments of the evil one. He's going to cancel some of the hopelessness and some of the fears and some of the anxieties that the enemy has tried to put in front of you. Like you don't understand, we had to shut our business down. We may never recover. I want you to know that even though tonight you may be in a valley of death and in a valley of dry bones and in a valley of something that once was, but now it looks dead. There is a God who... Breathes new life, breathes new life. You know, I was saying last night, if they would have told me what 2020 was like, Pastor Cindy, I would have said in February, put me to sleep in hibernation and wake me in 2021. But man, what a year. What a crazy year. Now, here's the thing. The devil cannot help himself, but always reveal his hand. When, 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 when God was raising up a deliverer to deliver Israel out of 400 years of bondage in Egypt, we knew the deliverer was coming because all of a sudden, Pharaoh makes a decree to throw all the male babies into the Nile River. Hmm, why would Pharaoh want to throw all the male babies from Israel into the river? Because the devil who lives in the spirit realm has access to some confidential intel. Because things happen first in the spirit, then they manifest afterward in the natural. When Yeshua HaMashiach, when Jesus the Messiah came, King Herod orders the execution of every child under three. How do we, how do we know the Messiah was coming? Because the devil overplayed his hand. 2020. 2020 has been unlike any other year that we've experienced. We saw the most divisive injustice with George Floyd. And as the protesters filled the streets protesting, it was interesting what they had on their shirts. They had, I can't, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Watch this, travel with me. I can't breathe. In the same year, COVID is released. COVID is a manufactured, it's a bioengineered virus in the, the labs of Wuhan and has been released around the world and it attacks your breathing, it attacks your respiratory system. Now we're told that you have to wear a mask everywhere you go. You have to wear a mask. I can't breathe, I've got to wear a mask, I've got to... It's, it's amazing because God created this, this world in a beautiful synergy. When you breathe in, you breathe in oxygen. When you exhale, you breathe out, you exhale carbon monoxide. Trees breathe in carbon monoxide and they exhale oxygen. It's a beautiful symbiosis that we're meant to have. But the enemy comes to try to interrupt. He wants to take away your breath. The Bible says that God breathed into Adam the breath of life and Adam became a living being. Right now, people need the breath of heaven to come upon their lives, to come upon their hopes, to come upon their dreams. So God brings Ezekiel into a valley. Let's keep reading. He brings Ezekiel into the valley and he says, can these bones live? Son of man, can these bones live? And I like Ezekiel. He's a smart man. He says, oh, so I answered, oh Lord God, you know. This is fun. He doesn't want to say, uh, God, I, as far as I'm concerned, it looks pretty hopeless. I like, because he knows you never tell God something's impossible. So he goes, oh, Lord God, you know. <laughs> May I just say to you tonight that what God is doing with Ezekiel, he's going to do with you before this meeting's done. In just the next few minutes, in the next few minutes, God is going to take you to a place beyond what you thought you could believe Him for when you first walked in. You know that you're in a great house sitting under a great word when, you're, when all of a sudden your faith ceiling bursts over your head and you begin to, oh my gosh, what? That's where God wants to take you tonight. God wants to take you to a new place. So watch this. So He answered, oh Lord God, you know. And again, He said to me, prophesy to these bones, son, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus says the Lord God of these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. You shall live. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. You shall live. You will not die. You shall live. You shall live. You sh- the poverty's not gonna take you out. The struggle's not gonna take you out. The loss of income's not gonna take you out. The, 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 the relapse is not gonna take you out. You shall live. The cancer's not gonna take you out. The COVID's not gonna take you out. The disease is not gonna take you out. You shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and a sudden rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, and I looked, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. And also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and they stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Now I want you to come down with me to verse 15. Come down with me to verse 15. It says, and again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, As for you, son of man, take a stick for yourself and write on it for Judah and for the children of Israel and his companions. Then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then join them one to another for yourself into one stick and thou shall become one in your hand. Thou shall become one in your hand. Let me, let me, let me help break this down. The first battle that is happening right now in our nation, we can say, well, it's around you know, the election, it's around the White House, and it's around the Senate, it's around the House, but, but actually, no, it's not. The first battle that's happening in our nation right now is on what you believe, on what you believe. I'm not sure if you realise this, but in the New Testament, we were only called Christians twice, and both times they were derogatory terms. All the way through the New Testament, we were called believers. You, you, you believe your way forward. You believe your way forward. When, when you were born, you came out head first. You went from a confined place into wide open spaces head first. It never changes. You believe your way forward. Jesus said that whosoever believeth in me would not perish but have everlasting life. Whoever believes in me, he shall have the light of life. He will not walk in darkness. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Do you believe this? Martha, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory. You believe your way forward. The world wants to attack your believing. That's why the world wants to govern the airways and pump lies at you 24-7 365 because the devil knows that what you believe determines what you receive. 12 12 spies crossed the promised land. I did this last night. 12 spies crossed the promised land. 10 spies saw the land and they said the land is filled with giants. It's the cities are fortified. The sons of Anak are there. It's a land that devours its inhabitants. The people are numerous. We are not able to take this land. But two spies, Joshua and Caleb said, what are you talking about? Their protection has departed from them. We are well able to take it. And I did the naughty thing that a pastor preacher shouldn't do, but I did it, I was naughty. I said, who was right, the 10 or the two? And everybody said, and it's a trick question because all 12 were right. The 10 that said it couldn't be done were 100% right for them It couldn't be done. They died on this side of the Jordan River. They died in the wilderness. They perished having never entered into the promised land. But the two, Joshua and Caleb, who said it can be done, were 100% right. They crossed over. They sacked city after city. They took Jericho. They took Ai. They took Jebus. They took city after city. The devil knows that your destiny is connected to what you believe today. He wants to shift what you believe. But you're the smartest people in Albuquerque. Because on a Wednesday night, despite lockdowns, despite 
governor edicts, despite everything else, you said, you know what? If I got to sit with a sign and call it a protest, I don't care what you want to call it. I'm going to get me to the house of God. I'm going to lean into the Word of God. I'm going to get some faith on the inside. I'm going to believe that my God can bring life in death. He can bring life in a valley. God comes to Abraham. This is one of my favourite stories. He comes to Abraham in Genesis 15. And he says, you know, Abram, and he says, here I am. And, and, and God says to him, you know, here I am. I'm your exceedingly great reward. <laughs> I mean, this is, a, this is a pretty awesome scripture. The God of the universe, the God of the cosmos and the constellations, the God of like giraffes, cute little penguins, <laughs> comes to Abraham and says, here I am. I'm yours, baby. You would think, I mean, this is better than finding a, a lamp on the beach, you know, a genie in the bottle, you gotta run the right way. It's not like that. This is the God of the universe presents himself to Abraham saying, here I am, I'm not yours, happy birthday. <laughs> Feliz cumpleaños, I mean, what a day. Abraham's response is loco. Abraham does, this is true, it's in Genesis 15. Abraham goes, so what? I mean, just as well, God's got a healthy self-image. He goes, so what? What's the point of all this blessing? When Eliezer, a servant born in my house, is the heir of all this stuff. Look, you haven't given me a son. Now, how many people know that when you start telling God to look, you're in big doo-doo? <laughs> now, come with me for a moment. Abraham is trying to tell the Almighty God to look at what he don't got. Now, before we judge him, we do this all the time. We say, look, I didn't get that job. Well, look, I didn't get the right. Look, I mean, look how hard it is. I, mean, I was born. On it. So we do the same thing, all right? So, so he's asking God to look. The Bible says that God, the heavens cannot contain him. The cosmos is not big enough to contain God. And yet Abraham in his tiny little tent is asking God to come down and look at what he don't got. It's a little bit like this. Abraham says, look! And God in heaven says, hmm. Gabriel, I distinctly thought I heard someone say, look. Oh, um, shall, I, shall I Google Earth the universe, Lord? <laughs> hmm, yes, 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 go ahead. <laughs> look! There it is again. Oh, I, I heard it, Lord. I, uh, uh, shall, I, shall I Google Earth it some more? Yes, go ahead. Look! There it is, Gabriel. Did you hear it? I heard it, Lord. It came from the one, two, three. It came from the third rock from the sun. Hmm. Third rock from the sun. Ah. Planet Earth. My favorite planet. Google Earth a little bit more. Look! There it is again, Gabriel. I heard it, Lord. Hmm, seems to be coming from the area of Mesopotamia. I wonder. Now, this voice also does sound like Simba. Everything the light touches. It also sounds like this is CNN. It also sounds like, Luke, I'm your father. I just don't know. I just don't. It's just a God voice, okay? It just, just to me, that's what he sounds like. Anyway. Now you're distracting me, stop. So, <laughs> Mesopotamia. <laughs> I'll Google it a little bit more, Lord. <laughs> Look, there it is. Ah, that's the Ur of the Chaldees. I wonder if that's Abraham. I'll go down and see if I can squeeze into, I'm not, I've got a better idea, Abraham. Get out of your tent and look up and begin to count the stars 
if you are able, because more will the stars in the sky and the sand on the sea be like your descendants, shall be as innumerous as the stars in... Now watch this, what was God doing? God was saying, you think the problem is in Sarah's womb. Before I can change what's in Sarah's womb, I have to change what you believe. Jesus says, if you believe, all things are possible for him who believes. The, the, devil, the devil doesn't want you to believe. All right, uh, little, little, little Bible test, Wednesday night, Bible test. There's one miracle, one miracle that Jesus did that's in all four gospel and it's the only miracle Jesus did that's in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. What miracle is it? Oh, very close. That's John chapter two. Blind, nope. Nope. He's got it. Feeding the 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000. Matthew's, Matthew's writing the 5,000 and he looks over and then Mark, Mark is writing. Hey, Mark, what, what are you doing? No, oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Jesus, Mark's copying. And then Luke, Luke the physician, he's like, well, you know, he's writing it too. And they're like, you know, Luke, what are you doing? Mark and I have got to write something else. You're a physician and doctor, write healing stuff. He's like, no, I'm writing it as well. Oh, you don't need to. He's writing it as well. What are you doing, John? Oh, I'm, I'm writing it as well. John, we don't, there's three of us. We don't need you. He's like, no, I'm right. All four, all four were unanimous that in their presentation of the gospel was going to be the feeding of the 5,000. Feeding of the 5,000. Not Jesus walking on water, not raising Lazarus from the dead, not opening the eyes of the blind, not turning water into wine. Feeding the 5,000. Why would feeding the 5,000 be the only miracle that's in Matthew, that's in Mark, that's in Luke, that's in John? Why, 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 why that miracle? Why that miracle? No, I want to know. No, sorry. Okay, so because this miracle is the miracle that most closely resembles your life and my life. It's the one that every single human being will face in their lifetime. Let me, let me break it down. Jesus has in front of Him, the Bible says, 5,000 men. They did not count the women and the children. Most Bible scholars say at a low, at a low there's 12,000 people. It could be up to 20,000 people. So let's just go mid-range there. Let's go 15,000 people. Jesus has 15,000 people in front of Him. With him are five loaves and two fish. Five loaves, two fish. The disciples come to him and they say, send the crowd away. We do not have enough bread to feed them. This is your life. This is my life. This is pastor's life. When he first moved here from Roswell, in the sense that, the vision in front of Jesus was greater than the resources with Jesus. And the spirit of the world says to you, what you gotta do is you gotta lower the vision down to the provision. One day I wanna start a company. Yeah, well, who's gonna fund that idea? Why don't you just give up on your dreams because you don't know any venture capitalists. Banks ain't gonna lend to you. You were born on the run. So the, the world, the spirit of the world says lower the vision down to your provision. But Jesus says, you don't need to do that. Sit them down in groups of 50. The disciples like, man, he's been in the sun too long. So they sit him down in groups of 50. And the Bible says, Jesus looking up to heaven, not looking out at the problem, not looking down at the lack of resources. He looking up to heaven. All breakthroughs come from looking up to heaven. The devil doesn't want you to believe. The devil doesn't want you to see. The devil doesn't want you to look up. David wrote, from where does my salvation come? I will look to the hills. My salvation comes from the Lord. The Bible says that He comes on the clouds. My Bible says that He met with Moses on a mountaintop. The God that we serve is an up God. Book of Revelation says, come up here. I must show you things that must take place after this. God is call, always calling you up. At the cross, they said to Him, if you are the Son of God, come down. The Spirit of the world is a pull down Spirit. The Spirit of God is an elevate Spirit. Come up. Your life is about to come up. Jesus looking up to heaven. Blessed 
breaks, gives to the disciples, and it multiplies. The Bible says it multiplies and everybody ate and was satisfied. Everyone ate and was satisfied. Now, I, I, I heard an archbishop, George, say that, well, you know, the real miracle was that, that the crowd took notice from the young lad who gave up his lunch and as they passed the bread and the fishes to the crowd, they said, hey, far be it from me that I shouldn't have to egg. And they passed it along. And the real miracle was that. <laughs> People who don't read their Bible say the stupidest things. The Bible says all ate and were satisfied. If you've ever been to the Golden Corral, nobody just, I just have a little bit. I just... People fill their plates. There are people coming up going, ah, oh, could I get two plates? And I'm like, well, who's the other one for? Ah, oh, me friend. Who's your friend? Ke Kev, um, Ke 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 Steve. Ah, like, oh, he doesn't know. And all of them were satisfied. Now watch this, this is where it gets crazy. Then Jesus said, now go, collect the baskets of leftovers. And the disciples are like, leftovers? Left, are you kidding me? We were hoping that there'd be just enough. He's like, guys, guys, really? 15,000 people, five loaves and two fish. Do you really think that was ever gonna be enough? No, we didn't think, exactly. So who was involved? Papa? Papa was involved. Now let me show you. When Papa is involved, his signature is left on every miracle. Go collect the basketfuls of leftovers. The Bible says they went out and they filled 12 basketfuls. They filled 12 basketfuls of leftover fragments. You can't fill one basketful with the original five loaves and two fish. 15,000 people ate and were satisfied and now they filled 12 basketfuls. How many disciples are there? 12. Coincidence? No. If you read your Bible, which I encourage, the next, the next destination is four miles away. Those disciples had to pick up a basket each and carry it for the next four miles. Jesus, it's getting heavy. <laughs> Jesus, can we stop and take a break? It's a, and you know what the fish and the, the, the bread fragments are doing? Explain <laughs> 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 this. I can't explain it. I'm not meant to be here, am I? You're not meant to be there. But I'm here, it's hurting your shoulder. It's hurting my shoulder. Why was he doing that? Because these were the guys who were gonna carry the church forward. He needed them to understand that the God that you and I serve is not the God of just enough. He's not the God of just, well, well, you know, to be sure, to be sure. All I'm asking for is a roof over my head, a nice warm bed and, a, and three meals a day. And that's all I ask. No, nowhere in the Bible does God reveal himself as a just enough God. No, nowhere. What, when he turned the water into wine, he fills six wash pots, 30 gallons apiece, 180 gallons. I'm not sure if you realize that, but that's 1,600 bottles of wine. No, no, Jesus wasn't saying, close the doors. Right, no one's leaving till you're all slain. That's not what he was saying. This was some of the best wine and this was a young couple who the groom had made a mistake. It's his job to make sure there's enough wine for the toasting. Jesus doesn't just cover his transgression. Jesus covers his transgression. And then 100, 100 and, uh, 1,600 bottles of wine is around about, on a cheap, cheap level, around about 480,000 to about a million dollars worth of wine. Jesus doesn't just save the moment. He sets them up for the rest of their lives because the God that you and I serve 
is not a just enough God. Stop believing for if I can just get through this week, if I can just put gas in my car, if I, you're the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. You're blessed going in, you're blessed coming out, you're blessed to be a blessing. But we limit God by what we believe. Don't let the devil steal from you what you believe. Then he says, I want you to prophesy and I want you to prophesy to the breath of God. And I want you to, br to breathe on these bones that they may live. And as he prophesied, the Spirit of God began to move. I, I love this church because I can feel there's a leaning in. I can feel that there's a freedom in the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is always eager? He's always waiting to confirm the Word with signs and wonders following. In just a few minutes, I'm gonna pray for, for people and miracles are gonna break out. Breakthroughs are gonna break out. Ceilings are gonna lift off. But watch this. The reason I, I read the last part is he says, to, he says to Ezekiel, I want you to get one stick and I want you to put the name Judah on it. And then I want you to get another stick and I want you to put the name Ephraim on it. Ephraim, the son of Joseph. And then I want you to bind them together and I want you to wrap them up and they'll become one stick in your hand. Judah and Ephraim. It's really interesting. Uh, in World War II, there was a, a thing that Adolf Hitler decreed called the final solution. And the final solution was the exterminating of the Jewish race. The Jewish race. I, I was born in Germany, so I read German. And some of the artifacts say, Juden verboten, which means Jews forbidden. It's interesting because Jews come from Judah. There are 12 tribes, but only one tribe is the tribe of Judah. They weren't interested in wiping out Naphtali. They weren't interested in wiping out Reuben. They weren't interested in wiping out Levi, but they were interested in wiping out Judah. In fact, the Jews have been the most persecuted race on the planet. The Juden. The, why? Why? Because Judah means praise. Right now they're saying we're not allowed to have church. And if we do have church, it needs to be outside and there's to be no singing. There's to be no praise. If you do come together, you wear a mask so no one can see your praise. The devil hates praise in the earth because my Bible tells me in Psalm 22 verse 4 that he inhabits the praises of his people. My Bible tells me, my Bible tells me. My Bible tells me that when they came to the walls of Jericho, when they came to the walls of Jericho, they didn't need to take a cannon to it. They didn't need to take a ramming rod to it. They didn't even need to take hammers or sticks. All they had to do was march around. And on the seventh time, on the seventh day, just give a shout of praise. And the, the devil doesn't want the walls coming down. He wants people in bondage. He wants people excluded from the promises of God. So he wants to shut down your praise. He doesn't want you to have praise on the inside of you. My Bible tells me, my Bible tells me that when Paul and Silas were in the prison and they began to praise in the midnight hour, that the chains fell from their wrists and the prison doors to their prison and all the other prisoners burst open. The chains fell from their wrists, but the chains fell from all the other prisoners. The prisoners sleeping, the prisoners mocking, all the prisoners bent. The devil doesn't want you to praise because he knows that when the church praises, even the people outside of our walls, even the people who are sleeping, even the people who are mocking, they don't even realise that something shifted in the spirit realm. The earth is never more like heaven than when we pray. The angels can't figure out where earth finishes and heaven begins when the house of God is in praise. The devil doesn't want the church praising because God inhabits the praises of His people. The devil doesn't want the church praising because the walls of Jericho come down when the church is praising. The devil doesn't want the church praising because chains and shackles fall off my wrist when I begin to praise. Prison doors bust open when I praise. The devil doesn't want you to have a praise. He wants you to have a whine. He wants you to have a complaint. He doesn't want you to have a praise because when you have a praise the walls come down so praise let me finish the praise is met with Ephraim Ephraim means fruitful 
in a foreign land. Of all the things of God, he, t- he takes Ezekiel into a valley of impossibility, takes him into a valley of death, into a, into a valley of COVID, into a valley of draconian lockdowns, into a valley of businesses shut down, into, into a valley of that there's no relief coming, into a valley of, of there's, there's no financial aid coming. He takes him into a valley of death. And it finishes, he says, boy, praise and fruitful in a foreign land. You don't need to be in a healthy economy for God to prosper you and increase. You don't need to be around the right people. You don't need to be born on the right side of the track. This is Joseph. Joseph in Egypt as a slave in Egypt, racially labelled the Hebrew that you brought has mocked me this day, attempting to rape me, thrown into prison. He's in a prison abandoned because of his skin colour, because of his ethnicity, and yet his testimony, his testimony is Ephraim, that God can cause me to be fr- I want you to know the blessing of God works whether you're tall or short. It works whether you're German or Australian. It works whether you're dark-skinned or light-skinned. It works no matter what your ethnicity, no matter what your background, whether you went to college or didn't go to college, the devil is a liar. You can be fruitful in a foreign land. You can be fruitful in a time of COVID. You can be fruitful during a season of lockdown. You can be fruitful because the blessing of God cannot be contained. Can somebody say amen? I want you to stand to your feet. I'm gonna pray for you right now. Father, I thank You for the breath of heaven. Just lift your hands if you want the the breath of heaven. Did you know the trees of the field lift their hands so that the wind of the Spirit might blow through because they know the source and the author of life. And the first group of people I'm, I'm praying for right now with your hands lifted is tonight the breath of God is gonna blow over you. And just like I said, the trees lift their hands. You, you know what else? When you stand like this, lifting your hands, I'm not sure if you realise that, but you're in a receiver position. On the side of many of our homes, there's a satellite dish, direct TV dish, TV antenna if you're old school. And these things, these things, these things project into the atmosphere. Because invisible to your eye, invisible to my eye, there's, there's waves. And these things catch those media waves. And then on a black rectangle object hanging in your living room, images are translated. When you come into the house of God and you lift your hands, the Spirit of God is here. He may be invisible, but He's here. And what He's going to do is He's going to put pictures under the television set of your heart because this is what the devil does if you're watching his shows if you're listening to his news he wants he knows he has victory over you when the screen is black when the screen is dark when it's a horror movie He says, this is your future and it's hopeless. This is your future and it's dry bones. This is your future and it's death. Your your best days were behind you. But when you come to the house of God and you lift your hands, Father, tonight, those that need a brand new picture, brand new picture, brand new picture, brand new picture. The Holy Spirit told me this. There's some people here tonight. I don't want to embarrass you. But the, the Holy Spirit told me this. There's some people here. You're believing for a baby. You're believing for a baby. And I want you with your hands lifted to close your eyes. And I want you to see your womb become fruitful. I want you to see a baby. Father, I release it. It's God's favourite miracle, by the way. God's favourite miracle, Old Testament and New Testament, is people that couldn't conceive, conceive. Father, I declare right now, I break the spirit of barrenness and I release fruitfulness. I release fruitfulness and fertility. In fact, a warmth comes on somebody's, you just felt like a warmth come right on your your lower abdomen. That's just the Holy Ghost preparing, Holy Ghost preparing. Mark this day, mark this day, mark this day. Couldn't have a baby. Somebody else should be miscarrying. God's gonna reverse that. In in fact, because of your miscarries, fear has dominated the, the, the living room TV of your heart. 
God today says, change the channel. Let the Holy Ghost change your channel. See life. Every single one that you lost is with me. They're waiting for you. It's a surprise when you get here. You're going to love heaven. But see right now, you're going to hold them here on earth. You're going to hold them here on earth. You're going to have to buy a bigger, bigger car. You're going to probably have to get a van because I see car seats and I see toys and, and baby vomit. It's, it's gross and diapers. And there was one stuck under the seat. And it, that's why the car, that's why it smelled. But God is going to do that. God is going to do that. That's who He is. It's who He is. Who He is. Somebody else here, you got a very, very negative doctor's report even just this week. And I want you to right now under the Spirit of God. This, this, is, this is the word, this is the word that, I, that I see. Misdiagnosis. The only way they're going to explain it is we must have misdiagnosis. I see it written on your screen. Misdiagnosis. I, I declare that Jesus is terminating terminal. Cancer, you are terminated in Jesus' name. Cancer, you are terminated. In a California accent, you are terminated. <laughs> Consider this the divorce. Father, I thank you right now. Father, Lord, for those, there, there's some people here and I just see financial hardship, financial hardship. God gave me a prophetic word when this broke out and I want to speak it over your life. As the breath of God moves over you, I want to prophesy and declare, if you will believe God, believe God, believe God, believe God. For every $1 that COVID took, for every $1 you've lost in income generated this year, the Lord would say, because you're my child, my son, my daughter, because you believe in me, $3 will come back for every $1 you've lost. $3 for every $1 you've lost. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now, maybe there are people here and you've never surrendered to Christ. I'm out of time and Pastor Steve said that the security team will beat me out the back if I go over time and I don't want to get another beating. They beat me before the meeting. I said, why are you beating me before the meeting? They said, beatings will continue until morale improves. I'm like, wow, Phew, he runs a tight ship, this guy. And uh, not really. But listen, would you just close your eyes and bow your head? I know I'm over time. But if you're away from God, would you come back? If you drifted from God, and let me tell you, it's so easy. And the devil wanted to make sure that the strip clubs are open, the liquor stores are open, the gambling casinos are open, the marijuana dispensaries are open, abortion. He, want, he wanted to make sure that everything that would only accelerate the destruction in your life was really close by you. And then he wanted to shut the church out and maybe you reached out to alcohol reached out to drugs maybe you did some things i want you to know the bible says there's no height nor depth no principality no power no sin no shame or guilt that is able to separate you from the love of god that's in christ jesus if you'll just turn away and walk from that thing so if that's you tonight saying i need to come back i need to return to god i i need to surrender to god would you quickly raise your hand just one hand high so that i can see it and i'm going to pray for you wow hands everywhere thank you 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 my god hands everywhere pray this prayer all those with, with your hands raised now listen this church wants to give you a bible and pray for you let them give you a bible but say these words out loud say heavenly father i want to thank you tonight you so love me that you sent jesus your only son on a rescue mission to save my life. Lord Jesus, thank you. You said yes to going to the cross and dying in my place because of what you did on that cross, shedding your blood. Tonight, I am free, forgiven, clean. Every hold, every hold the devil had over my life is broken right now in Jesus mighty name I am free because I am a child of God amen amen come on give God a great praise thank you pastor